You are our biggest requested guest. Oh, that's very flattering. So we've been dealing with something and and we're gonna share it with you guys because I think it's something a lot of people go through. I think it's something that everyone experiences and I think it's something that we're gonna experience hundreds more times in our marriage. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Hey guys, I missed you. <laughs> really missed you guys so much. We didn't even talk that much. No. no. I texted Alex. Well, you, you texted me the weirdest thing. You were like, do you miss me? And I didn't know if it was a bit you were doing because you do that a lot. <laughs> right. And I was shot. like, it was like more than words can describe. And then I was like, why? Like, are you posting this to Mean Girl? And you're like, no, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I was just curious. And I was like, you don't understand how badly I've wanted to FaceTime you every day, but I didn't want you to eat a light bulb over your arm. So but you have like, it. I know, you did really good. Oh, no, I wanted to, but I didn't. Thank you. I, I saw somebody at the Thunder game and they're like, do you miss Jordan? And I was like, does Jordan miss me? <laughs> Let me ask her. <laughs> Wait, is that why you asked? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were just randomly wondering. Aww. I was randomly wondering. Sad. A lot's changed. Lots. Uh, hold on. A lot has changed, but guess what has not? What? The shots we take of Pink Whitney. Ooh. Ooh. And you know what? <clears throat> the most perfect stocking stuffer in the entire world is Pink Whitney Little Nips. Oh, hell yeah. The word nips, I still am not. I call them pocket shots. I say shooters. Okay, so whatever term you use, wherever you're geographically located, I think it varies. Um, get some Pink Whitney shots for your family and put them in their stockings. Yeah, I went to the liquor store in Minnesota, and the first thing... I did was ran over to make sure they had Pink Whitney in stock, and they did. At a girl. I did. At a girl. Yeah. And my mom was like, we should get some shooters for the fam. And I was like, all right, Ma, let's do it. Did you do it? Um, no, because they were actually out of shooters, but they did have the bottles in stock. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Or, I just feel like so much has changed that you're going to have Graham in for a second to talk about some big news. Alana's hair is a new color. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate you guys saying it looks nice, but I... Literally had like a classic hair meltdown about it. Like I've never, I've never cried so hard over my, getting my hair done. It's so personal to not so like. So personal. What else can ruin your day like not liking your hair? What there's nothing you can put on your body that can do it. Can we agree that hair probably changes your physical appearance more than anything else? Yeah. I mean, I think you would make the argument of lip filler, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think hair is everything. That's why I was so upset. So upset. I was just like felt so ugly. Like. My dad, <laughs> my dad was just like making fun of me so much because I was distraught. Like I came home like oh. sobbing over my hair. Wait, when was this? When did you dye it your was hair? Ye- it was Saturday. Okay, it yesterday. Was, it was yesterday, and I was sobbing. So he just like when we were getting our tree and stuff, he was like just calling me his ugly daughter and stuff, <gasps> like just to fuck oh with God, me because like funny. I Ooh. was like just being so crazy. Like I don't, today I feel better about it, but. Oh my God. Can I ask you something about this? <clears throat> what? So Jordan and I like love your hair and Graham uh-huh. was in here and he's like, I really like your hair. Uh-huh. Can that change your mind or it doesn't matter what we say, you have to like it? I think it's, I still, it's still like, I don't love it. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that other people do. Mm-hmm. I just don't like it. Like, so when I met you, you were probably a little darker than you are now. Maybe, yeah. So I love your hair this dark because it makes me feel like you're the Lana that I met. Aww. You know what sweet. I mean? It was like your roots. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I feel too, I guess I feel too, it's my natural hair color, so I feel like a child. I I feel like it's a drastic change because I've never known you with this hair color. Oh, I haven't true. even seen a photo of you. So I, I was like, whoa. I'm a big, I think one color is in right now. I'm not a huge fan of like highlights or balayage anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm like all blonde or all brunette, all red. Like just do it one color. I love a one color head of hair. No dimension. I don't like dimension anymore. I just, Mm. I, I, I had a balayage for so many years of my life. Um, I had highlights and I'm just one color and I just, I don't know. I just love a one color. I'm also in like this like natural girly phase. Mm, no, or, no nails. No, na- no nails. I, I love the no nail look. I really do. Okay. That's not by choice though. Okay? But I, I love it. <laughs> you better believe as soon as my nails get strong enough, I'm getting <laughs> my nails done. But really? it's like. Oh, I miss them. Yeah. No, I'm getting mine done tonight because like if I have a good manicure, a fresh manicure, I feel like I can do anything like and I'm, I'm a better person. Um, so how was Thanksgiving, everybody? It was good. Since mm. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving Eve, what did you guys? So uh, you still did it? You did? No. Oh, okay. I was. Um, so I went to my grandma's and 
she lives in the country, nowhere near any, uh, nowhere near where my friends are. All my friends are up in the cities, which is an hour drive. Oh, wow. So I'm like very far and isolated when I go back home to Minnesota, which is rare because my parents don't even live there anymore. So I just like don't have the opportunity to hang out with my friends, even if I wanted to. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's kind of nice though. It was. I got to spend a lot of time with my grandma and my mom and my dad, which was really nice. That's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so we had, we had something every single night, like an event every single night that I was home. Wow. But this is one of my favorite Thanksgiving breaks that I've ever had. When Graham comes on, I'll tell you like what we were going through as a couple, because you'd be like, how was that fun? Something about it was like really like supportive and it felt really secure, although it was like crazy, but we, it was like the best of all the worlds. Cause we went out every night and we were social, which I love. And like we had it like so it wasn't like for nothing. It was like a Thunder game or like a Thanksgiving. And then like the whole family went out. So it was things like that. And then I also felt like I spent a lot of quality time with family mm -hmm. because I was there for so long. So I left this morning and I was like, I feel really fulfilled. Like I feel like Oklahoma fulfilled me. That's so that was a, nice. Oh. An incredible feeling to have too. It was it was really good. I'm just kidding. I'm completely kidding. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> it's because you're a girl. It, pretty much, yeah. Um, um, um Alana, how was yours? Yes. Thanksgiving Eve. Thanksgiving Eve. Did you do it? Well, no, it was super, it was like really awkward because um, we, so Mike and I went to my family's for Thanksgiving and then Monday, like, he was like, all right, what are we doing for Thanksgiving Eve? I knew we weren't going to go to the bars. We're kind of over that. And I had heard whispers that my ex was having the party and I'm like, please don't let this be like official. So I like didn't really say anything yet. And that ended up being the case. And your ex is in your friend. Yeah, he's group. in my friend group. Yeah. Um, so it's like my hometown friend group. Um, so for a minute there, we were like, maybe we just go to Boston last second. But my mom had already we, we had already been in the headcount for Thanksgiving. So it was just so we ended up just sitting at home. Wait. Yeah. You didn't go out on Thanksgiving Eve? No. Wait, because your ex was hosting the party? Yeah. What's your relationship like with your ex? So the thing is, is that the fact that it was at his house was the reason we didn't go. Because you would go exist with him in a friend group. A thousand percent. And would, I actually would Mike? probably would have gone. Yeah. Okay. I would have gone if Mike wasn't there either, probably. It would have been a little weird. I haven't been there since we broke up. So... I think it'd be, and I was very close with his family, so I think I would sneak in through the back door or something to God. avoid his mother, because like oh. we were very close, and like she might cry if she sees me. Kind of Wait, situation. dude, that would be really uncomfortable walking yeah. with Mike, seeing his mom. It just wouldn't have been. I, it, it sucked because when I heard that that's where the party was going to be, I knew that we couldn't go. Mm -hmm, like it just yeah. wouldn't have been. It's just too much. Like I always am kind of pushing it. A little bit because I'm trying to make it as normal as possible because like he's very much in my friend group. But there's certain times where you just have to like chalk it up to like, all right, I, we can't go. This is just better, of, especially yeah. if you're close with the family. Yeah, that's like so. That's and it's at his house. Yeah, his childhood, his home. childhood home. Yeah. That you, yeah, that that's to hang at. It was just too much. And like I was actually, Ooh. I was bummed because like we had made the choice to go to to Jersey, so I felt like bad that it didn't, it wasn't as fun as it could have been. And, but it, luckily like his friends weren't really doing anything. And I was actually cool with not doing anything. Like we had a busy weekend the, like last weekend. So sitting home to me, it was like not a big deal, but still kind of a bummer. Yeah. yeah. I've never really experienced hanging out, like having an ex in my friend group. It's so hard. Especially it's, cause like your best girlfriends are in that group. My best, and my best girlfriends are very close with him. Mm. It's tough. Like there's, and I totally get it. Like, I think it's one of the things that you kind of just deal with. It's a situation I put myself into. So uh, these are the, I'm reaping the consequences. Mm -hmm. But there's times where it's like, I've been like very down about it. Like extremely. Um, Do you feel betrayed? I, I used to. And that's something I kind of had to work through because it's not a betrayal. I literally, I'm so crazy. Like I, and I don't really have people to talk about it with. Well, I, that's not true. Like. My outside friends obviously are like, that's fucked up, but they don't get it. Because these are high school friends, These are right? my high school. These are people I grew up with. So yeah. like, and these are like my best friends. So and it's these like, girls have been friends with him forever too. I've literally been in forums about like how to deal with stuff like this. Really? Wow. Like not writing it, but reading them because I don't know if I have the right to be upset. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. something that was tough was um, three of them, two of them and two guys went down to his house in the Keys and no one told me because I would have been upset. So when I found out, I was so upset. They I, have. They they should have told you. Yeah, I don't know how that logic. They should have told me. Maybe, but I. It's. This is something I do, I struggle with, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, do I have a do? Should they have? No. Like I live with my boyfriend. Right. And right. We've been friends forever. Like they don't have to clear that with me. That's true. Does that make sense? That's like, very mature of you to and say. And that's something that I mean, the initial sh like I say something like that, and that's what I'm saying. People are like, that's fucked up. But I think once you think about it from their point of view. What are they supposed to do? Well, and you have not go to the keys. I was gonna say, what are you gonna say? What am I gonna say? Don't like that. So that's where I found myself in these like forums. I, I swear, like it's so crazy that I'm like saying that. Like I've written like like long texts about how I feel, and then read them back, and I'm like, at the end of the day, it's just how you feel. Like, what are they gonna say? Sorry, that's really hard. Right, Does like that makes sense. It's like yes, I think a lot of people are in this situation too. Like listening, will appreciate you saying that because yeah. you always see movies. Like, sorry, I'm just using movies because I don't have any exes in my friend group of people who are like best friends with their like college sweetheart, or high school sweetheart, and then their fiance has to come into the picture and hang out with them and. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot oh. ever imagine hanging out with any of my exes on a regular basis or my best girlfriends being friends with them. Like, that would break yeah. me. I don't care to hang out with him. Like, when he's there, I'm just like, like whatever. Like, um, sometimes we catch ourselves, like, laughing at each other's jokes, <laughs> oh. which is kind of funny. Oh. Yeah, that's funny. Because we're like, oh, we used to be boys. You know what I mean? Uh, like we, you're, we you're still kind know. of my stranger. You're a stranger to me now, but in those moments, it's like, oh, fuck. I'm sitting next to a stranger who actually is not a stranger. Like, I probably know you better than everyone in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so weird? It's Ooh. very weird. Exes are um, so weird. But my, like, hurt comes more from dealing with, like, territory, I guess. It does sound like it's more that, yeah. like a loyalty territorial situation as opposed to, like, really, are you upset? No. You don't give a fuck if they go hang out with him no. because you don't like him like that. No. So it's like, it's not that. It's more like, yeah. I do think you made, you made a couple good points. I've just been trying to listen because I'm like, uh-huh. Okay. I, I was going to say something. I'm not going to say it anymore because I don't agree with it anymore. I think in every scenario with an ex, it's awkward and you shouldn't hang out with them because if you do hang out with them or if like you are close with your ex, I don't think there's any scenario where you can say with the straight face, 100% lie detector, that you have no feelings for them. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's no way. Thousand percent. You know what's interesting? So what's the point? Like, I hate to say this, but I think that'd be a deal breaker for me if I got involved with a guy and he was like, hey, I just want to let you know, I am still best friends with my ex. I could not date that person. I totally, completely agree. I, I like... Firsthand, if I if him and I were close, like that'd be a problem. Wait, you wh can't. Why were you hesitant about what I said? Would could you? Not at all. Oh, okay, because I'm interesting. No, 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 no. Because I don't think <clears throat> with exes, like if you, you know the you know the funny thing, like there's my guy with the girl he told me not to worry about. Yes, that's the most true thing in the world. Like the one you're worried about, it's not for nothing. <laughs> like I think the law is you don't get to mess with that person anymore. They're yeah. next for. Yeah, yeah. Keep like, them out of your your life. Not your situation's a little different because you have a massive friend group, but like, you don't need to be best friends with your ex. Well, you have to be. There's a you have to toe a line there of appropriate. You have to think about Mike. Like that's such a scenario. Yeah, yeah. That's so. It's, exes are really complex, and every and it has a lot to do with both people. Yeah, like both parties. Like my relationship with my ex is completely different than yours and Graham's with his ex. Yeah. They're two totally different scenarios and it has to do with who we all are as people. Like mm -hmm. I just think about all my exes and if I'm hanging out with any of them it's because I still have feelings for them. Like I broke up, we broke up with each other so we don't want to be around each other anymore. You can't say, you can't be, you can't hang out with your ex and say we're best friends and say I you agree. Can't. It's hard and you just have to kind of check yourself and yeah, walk us through why you chose not to go. To, to Thanksgiving Eve? Yeah. I didn't go because Mike was like, I'm not going there. Okay. And also, I just knew that right off the bat. It would be way too much. Like, I think for both of us, it would have just been, 
I wouldn't want Mike to be in his basement and being like, do they have sex on that couch? Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to see, I didn't want to see his parents and be like, this is my at, this is my boyfriend. Like, it's just, but conversely, like I would, wouldn't mind if he brought his at girlfriend to my house, really. I don't really yeah. care that much, but it, I could see why it would mm -hmm. be weird. Mm -hmm. I feel like for the respect of a lot of different parties, you chose not to go, which was a very mature view. Yeah, yeah. And I, there was a little bit of a moment where I was upset that my friend, my girlfriends weren't like, fuck it, let's not go and let's just all hang out us and Mike. Then I'm like, so they do that and they ruin that party because mm -hmm. then no girls are going. And we're all just sitting on my parents' couch. With, like, you know what I mean? Like that's, I had to check myself in that way and be like, oh, I wish that, you know, they would all cancel their plans for me. Yeah. Right. But like, these are their friends. That's, I would, I don't know if I, it's not like a random guy. These are our friends, mm -hmm. like literally, like, you lifelong know, friends. Life, like, so it's tough in that sense, but I just always try to put myself in their shoes and be like, no, I, I'm not going to cancel. I'm not going to ruin our all Thanksgiving Eve because you date you decided to date one of our friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you do have to you do have to check yourself on it, but I feel like you're doing a really good job. Like I just learned a lot Same. actually that I hadn't thought about. Yeah. And you can't require other people you to do things. That's like what all the forums I read were saying. They were like you can't control other people's social lives and their journeys and their relationships. Like this is about your re one relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the other spider webs around it are kind of just fallout. I also think putting yourself in other people's shoes, like I know it sounds so simple, but actually to do it and make your decision based off that is so mature and like such a big growth part of life. Mm -hmm. Huge. Like yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to be that way with like girlfriends. If like I didn't get along with somebody and like one of my <laughs> other friends hung out with them, I would have a loyalty issue with that. Mm -hmm. And then the older I get, the more I'm like, what? I, one, have no control over what they do. Two, I'm just, it's an ego problem. Like, I don't yeah. really care if they hang out. Yeah. So it's good, good job. That was, I haven't thought about those kinds of scenarios in a while, but that was really helpful. Yeah, Thanks. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. It took a lot of work. Proud of you, Alana. Thank yeah. you. All right, show us that ad. All right. Alex. Do you guys want to talk about... Proper wild. Yeah, we do. I know you do. We it's, love it. <laughs> it's something that I would totally be using today. Um, it's a clean all-day energy shot designed to boost your energy, focus, and productivity without the jitters or crash. No preservatives, no artificial sweeteners, no horrible chemicals, just a natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that work. So I don't have one today, but I have had these before. And when it says no jitters, I am telling you, this stuff is the best. Like I would take it in the morning around like 11, you know, when your coffee wears off mm -hmm. and it lasts all day. Yeah, no, Alana and I took it uh, last week before you got here because we were tired and it like kicked us into gear before we recorded. That's the best. Yeah. And you weren't jittery, were you? No, no. not at all. So you guys, especially for the holidays, this is key for the holidays because we do a lot. It's go, go, go. So you could give the gift of Proper Wild or you could buy it for yourself or you could do both. Go to properwild.com backslash barstool to try Proper Wild for 30% off. That's proper, P-R-O-P-E-R, wild.com slash barstool to try it for 30% off. Love that. Wait, Alex, we have a special guest on the pod. I know. I'm so excited. I'm very excited. I'm thrilled. Who is it? It's my husband. <laughs> it's Graham. Do they not see me yet, or are they not? Do they not know you're here? Yeah. Yet? Like oh, they I've been just talking. Case, just in case um, people are not watching on YouTube, which they should be. We like Got to it. make sure we use names for the audio. But you are our biggest requested guest. Oh, that's very flattering. Like our DMs are always like, "Can Graham come on? Can Graham come on?" I'm like, he was on mm -hmm. uh, episode yeah. fifteen. A few months ago. Or something. Yeah, a few before summer. It was, I think it was like April, May, May. Yeah. You were on in May. That was a fun episode. Yeah, I loved it. We okay, so this is this is what's crazy is we were gonna have Graham on anyways, because we just got back from Oklahoma. We we're gonna come straight here, gonna have Graham on the pod. We were gonna talk about, I think, like gifts. Yeah. Um, gift giving for the holidays. We season. did Mike last week, we wanted Graham this week. And ironically, Graham and I have had because marriage is hard, right? Oh, for sure. Everyone and everyone says that, and you're like, okay, cool. But it, but it is. And no, it's it, a lot of work. A yeah. lot of work. And it comes in waves, though. Mm -hmm. So we've been dealing with something, and, and we're going to share it with you guys, because I think it's something a lot of people go through. Yes. That's why I'm sharing it with you. I wouldn't, like, bring a problem to you guys for fun, but I think it could be, I think it's something that everyone experiences, and I think it's something that we're going to experience 
hundreds more times in our marriage. No, I think it's great too, because I feel like a lot of people think everyone online is perfect. So knowing that people have challenges in relationships and marriages will help a lot of people listening because just because we might look perfect from what you're seeing does not mean our lives or marriages or relationships are by any means. Absolutely. And, and this problem kind of came out of nowhere. Like, like I kind of felt it a little bit. I don't think you felt it at all. I'll, no. I'll, I'll explain yeah. it to you. It's because we don't really know what's going on, Alana and I. So Alex is going to give us like the full lowdown. I broke it down on the plane and like the problem and then what what to do about it and then the solution. Perfect. So I kind of tell it to you like that. I'm going to refer to my notes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so what happened was I I require, like my number one thing I love is to be like flirted with, touched, all of that. That's like my love language, I guess, is physical touch. Um, like maybe it's that coupled with I'm obsessed with growth and somebody being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. The first one I've always known about myself. I have known I need to be touched. I need to be flirted with. I need all of that. The other one, I I was always like, that's kind of weird for me to value success so much. But I've been talking to my therapist about it, and she's like, it's okay that that's one of your values. It's going to feel a lot better if you just address that and then accept it. Wait, what do you mean by that? Like, I, if somebody has an opportunity, it's really attractive to me if they seize it. Yes, like so, motiva- motivated or being motivated. Yeah, and, and being okay with getting really uncomfortable, vulnerable, wanting to grow, all of that. Okay, so that so I st- I felt like Graham had gotten on autopilot, kind of. And maybe you would become like complacent. So what I didn't do, I started feeling this like three weeks ago. And I didn't tell him though. I didn't tell anybody. I just kind of bottled it up. I thought things were great. This is what's so funny to me. Is Graham's like, huh? And I was like, Alex is spiraling and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you had no idea. You were you were actually like completely caught off guard. No, because I was really comfortable with my own self. Like I thought everything was going really great with my job. I was proud of myself. I was happy there. I was hitting my stride in some way. And then like my other relationships with friends and family were going really well. So no, I thought things were good. <laughs> Here's the thing. Things were good. Yeah. It wasn't a problem, but I didn't feel like that spice, that fire. Mm-hmm. And I started noticing it. And instead of talking to him about it immediately, for some reason, I just kind of like froze. And I was like, let me see like what happens here. Um, and I kind of like closed off and I was just like observing because I wanted him to fix it. I was like, okay, well, he knows I value being flirted with and touched. So he'll do it. He'll notice that I'm shutting off and he'll start doing it more. Okay. Well, he can't read my mind. And so all, I always say this, all we have is communication. Like, mm-hmm. and it's selfish of me to not communicate to him, but for, I don't know why I closed off, but I did. Well then, like you said, um, that you were going out late to try to get my attention. I was kind of like acting out a little bit. I also didn't want to go home because I just was like, I, I, for some reason it was really hard for me to deal with this one. So I was, like if we, sometimes if we have social events, like I don't go to them all, but I was going to all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't know if you noticed. Right. Oh, <laughs> I did. And I did. staying really late at them. Yeah. Like yeah. I was just, I was like, I just want to, like, I don't want to go home. I don't want to face it. When I was home though, there was nothing, we weren't fighting. We weren't arguing. Mm-hmm. We were just kind of coexisting in the same apartment. Like you felt more like roommates than ma- a married couple. Correct. She I, did. I did. She, you yeah. did. Sorry, Alex did. But you don't require this flirting thing that I do. It's like one of my top three requirements. If I don't have it, I start to feel like I am your roommate. And then you were fine because that's really not what you require. Right. So we're flying home on the plane. Wait, so quick, just right. for, for people who don't know, Graham, like, can you quick describe his personality versus yours? It's very different. The most different. We are yin and yang. Graham, you're very, you're very introverted. Absolutely. And you recharge being by yourself. Like, you don't need to be social. Or with a very small group of friends. Yes. Yes. Small, loyal following. Yes. Is you. Always. And and you don't need anything else besides that. No. I mean, I love spending time with you. Like, I am introverted, and I do recharge by being by myself, but I could sit with you on the couch for hours and also recharge. Totally. But going to social events drains me for the most part. Right. You don't like doing and it. Like, I have to tap out at some point. I can't go past midnight usually. And I love them. I I, th- I love social mm-hmm. events and they make me happy and I think they're so fun. And it's part of the reason I love New York and this job. Mm-hmm. So we're, okay, so we're on the airplane flying back to Oklahoma and something about like a social event gets brought up and he's like, I really don't want to go. The and, Sprinter uh, van. 
So yeah, taking taking this van down to the OU game. And I, this is why you don't bottle things up. I'm like, well, yeah, I need to talk to you, by the way. And he's like, okay, well, we have a four-hour flight. So do you want me to sit here and think about why you have to talk to me? Or would you like to just go ahead and tell me? You said that to him before you got on the plane, Alex? We're right when we sat down. <laughs> hasn't taken off yet. Has, the plane hasn't oh, taken yeah. off yet. This is like my nightmare. Same. <laughs> and he's like, a no. long flight. He's like, <laughs> yeah. no time like the present. Yeah. There were tears shed on this flight. There was silence. My mom was sitting diagonal behind us, but she had her headphones in. So I was like, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. So I start telling him everything I just told you. I was like, I said, the main thing is I, you're not flirting. Like, I don't, I don't feel loved. Like, I guess that's the basis of it. I was like, I'm not feeling love from you. And I feel like I'm just kind of living with the roommate again. Mm -hmm. This is the top line. And then you said, you were like, I feel like you take advantage of me. Take me for granted. Take you for granted. Yeah. And don't feel loved back. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So that that's where we were on the plane. <laughs> Makes me like. Want to cry Aww. hearing Graham say that. Yeah, it made me want to cry too. I was like, Aww. okay. So this was like the purging part of it, right? We're getting it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you got to bring it to the surface. Graham's shocked. I've been harboring this for two weeks and I just felt like I was still in my own head and I was just saying it out loud. So far, so good? So far, so great. Okay. Yeah. And then... Were you word vomiting? Like, did you feel like it was just like coming out of you uncontrollably? One thing I actually have been doing the past two weeks is writing everything down. And then I've been rereading it in the mornings. And then taking the things I still feel. So I actually had like five points written. And so when it did get brought up, and I keep my journal with me all the time. So when it got brought up, I was like, I don't want to mess this up. And so I did pull it. I didn't word vomit very much. But it's awesome. And it's that really was a really good skill. That was nice because I meant every, every single thing I said. Yeah. Like I, I didn't feel like I was talking out of context much. That's actually a really good idea for anyone like going through problems like to write it down so they don't go out of context when it comes down to the actual talk that's a real that's a good point yeah and, and it was so beneficial I don't yeah. even know why I did it it's great so the thing about this talk was at one point I was asking Graham like these tough questions and he was he said I don't know he's like this feels like a really risky conversation to have and like I don't know about answering these questions because it seems like a really big deal and it's kind of scaring me mm -hmm. and I was like we have all, all we have is what we say to each other. Like, you're not inside my head. So I was like, we have to have this talk as opposed to what? Brushing under the rug and it right. comes back in a month. Like every, you were really scared of. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I was really scared of this, like, problem happening again because it's so important to me. I think it's also so interesting. We're not at home yelling at each other. Yeah, and that was one of the things my therapist asked me. Like, how? what's the dialogue like? And it's like, we're very civil. Like, I still give you a hug, give you a kiss, and, like, we talk about everything. We never raise our voice. Yeah. it was We were being, we were being so polite around each other, yeah. almost. And it's like, but there was this problem, and it's like, you have to say, like, I am going to deal with it. This is the problem. The conversation at the time, we're choosing really hard short-term for really good long-term. That's what it was. It's like, we're going to have to buckle down and really talk about this. It's going to be a little awkward. It's going to be really emotional. We're going to get maybe a little mad, a little sad, but... The only way out is through. So we had to sit there and we had to like dig up the feelings. And it was really good to hear from him, like to, to just almost stop and be like, of course I've been feeling this and you haven't. And I just blindsided you. But like, it was like a marriage check-in also. Yeah. Mm. Because he did have things. Like yeah. he was like, I feel like you take full, you take me for complete granted. Like you can't book a freaking flight, Alex. And I'm like, correct. On a little scale. Yeah. That's yeah. a very little example. Like a minimal example. Very minimal. So then we... We have a question for Graham. Okay. So if Alex wouldn't have brought up her issues, were you going to talk to her eventually about how you were feeling? Or was this kind of like, wait a second, I actually have some issues with you too that I want to talk about. Yeah, that's a really good question. Good question. I don't think I would have necessarily brought it up to Alex because I thought what she was going through reminded me a lot of, of last year when she was going through a rough stage. So I was like, okay, maybe she's in that. I'll just support her through it. And then in a few weeks we'll be good. Um, and, but when she started saying all that stuff, like all these emotions started hitting me and I was kind of thinking about, about conversations with my therapist and I was like, Oh, this is the perfect time to say it. And it just kind of came out mm. honestly. So it's good. Like, you, Oh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a, long and we had extreme headwind the plane ride took forever but it was really good it was the longest flight ever yeah i think too it it made me like 
So, so when we get into the solution mode, so Thursday was kind of just like reporting to each other. This is how we feel. And mm-hmm. then you're kind of like, oh my gosh, cause we don't, we don't argue much. So no. when we get into something like this, it's kind of like it, we're taking it very seriously. And then Friday we started talking more and, and figuring it out and being less emotional and more like logical, yeah. I would say, um, and more honest. And so it's like, he knows he's got to flirt with me more. Mm-hmm. And I know too, like I, I can't take advantage of him. I can't take you for granted. Like I need to step up in a lot of areas um, and be like a little less selfish. But the biggest thing that we realized we both have to do is figure out, cause we've changed a lot. We lived in Oklahoma mm-hmm. and then we moved to LA and now we're here. And that's very different from the scenario when we started dating. And I think that happens to people all the time. You start dating in one place and then you both grow and you grow together, but stepping back and saying, who am I as a person? So like Graham does a lot for me, but what I actually need from him is for him to be his true self. Yeah. And he needs that for me. So, I was, well, first off, I was on the defense when you were saying, you know, all the talking about how I need to love you more. And what I was describing were all the acts of service or acts of, is that a love yeah. language? Yep. Acts of service that I was doing for you. And like for you, that's like nothing. Him, full, just, him making me breakfast or bringing me a cup of coffee. He's like, I'm loving her so well. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm like, I want you to come like make out with me. Yeah. So it was, it, we were, he thought he was doing it. So that's why he was, he, of course, immediately you were like, I, what are you talking about? And I'm like, that's not how I receive love. So I wasn't even thinking he, I didn't even, yeah. feel, that felt roommate to me. And then also about the change thing. When we started dating, I was very social. Like I was always introverted, but I could, I was a big drinker and liked to have a huge time when we did go out. So that's been an adjustment for you as well. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. When you guys first started dating, you were full-blown drinking. Always going out. We would host oh. a ton of parties. You weren't engaged at all during the drinking, right? Or yes, were we you? were. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He drank when we first got married. Like, mm-hmm. he drank at the wedding. Yeah. Oh, wait. You have you only have given up drinking for three? A little over three years. Yeah, okay. So, like, six, the first six months of us being married, I drank. Yeah, and then he stopped. Yeah. Wow, and that's, like, the foundation of when you're, like, really creating a marriage together and becoming like a married couple. Yeah. And so it's like organizing pieces, right? So you're like, what do I love about Graham? All, it, the list is so long and nowhere on it was that he drinks or not. Mm-hmm. It, there was on there though. I love somebody to go be social with. So yeah. it has been an adjustment of like, I now do, I do social things. Um, so that part's been, and so it's just like recognizing that though. And being like, this is, you were when we met, now it's different. So that's the whole, like, it's kind of being, it's kind of like, how do you say it? Being yourself for you Mm -hmm. and being who you truly are and knowing I'll love you no matter what. Yes. And being okay with that. Yeah. And I don't do a good job of that. I get nervous. I get scared to be my full authentic self. He, he tries to be who he thinks I want him to be. Because I don't want her to think I'm boring, you know, or like, I, I still want her to have fun Yeah. or anything like that. So I just always go with the flow. But then, I mean, obviously that can cause me to be upset or any, any of those emotions. And then it built up. So it, la- it lands us there. I have a question for you guys and this might like spiral. So don't forget where you're going. So in a marriage, I feel like maybe this is more Midwest, but we're always told like, when you get married, you need to compromise and become like one person together. And something that you've really taught me and shown me, because like that's why, why I'm scared of a relationship and marriage, because I don't want to become the person I'm dating. I want my own life. But in the Midwest, that's not OK. But you've taught me that it is OK. So when you guys were first married, did you feel like you had to be like that? And now you're learning to be your individual selves in a marriage and still ch- like stick to who you are as individuals? I don't think we've ever felt that way. Really? That way. But no, we talked about this today though. Yeah. My, I think a lot of people in their marriage, their identity is their marriage or yeah. a lot of t- traditionally speaking, the woman is just like, my husband does X, Y, Z in it. And her identity is kind of family, kind of marriage. Yeah. Like that's, they, if you like, if they were to get divorced, like the woman would be like, I don't know. He was my everything. He, it, you know, she he would have nothing. He would have everything. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like I think about that all the time, right? He Scary. dies tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Who's Alex? Yes. I die tomorrow. Who's Graham? You yeah. know, like, are you still okay? And it's this, it's this love is the base of it. And morals probably right on top of it for me 
of the foundation that we mm-hmm. both have to have, and we have to be fully and aligned share. on that. Yeah, Sh- yeah like share. the values and the morals, we gotta share those. Mm-hmm. Those have to be intact, and those have to be a family thing. Like that's that's us as a as a family. Yep. But then outside of that, it can be like I value success, all these things, and you have to value your things. Mm-hmm. You have to have your hobbies. I have to have my hobbies. Yes. And we have to be our own people for ourselves. Because if I'm who you, if I'm who you, I think you want me to be, I'm not showing up as my best self. Right. And I can't, like, I can't sustain that. Yes, I love that. That's so true. That's a really good question, though. Yeah. I thought about that because I'm like, are we, are you, it's almost like you wonder in marriage, are we going closer together to become, like, one and it's, like, one brain? Or is it, like, two brains kind of in one head that that, that works a lot United. better. Yeah. 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 I think the latter. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. I agree. But I think a lot of people are scared cuz a lot of people assume it's the first one. You have to be like this one person with like the same thoughts. Totally. That's totally. Really scary. It is scary and it's like I, this this is what it taught me though. Because you asked me when I walked in you're like how how are you? And I'm like I'm so good because it there was never I just kept looking at you and I was like I'm so the weirdest thing is happening, but I'm so happy that we're ha- we're struggling through this. Mm-hmm. It was like we were struggling well. It was vulnerable and it was hard, but I was so happy because I was like, on the other side of this is an answer. Is if you go on autopilot and you're just not focusing on anything, like what's the point of life, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to stop and say, this is gonna suck, but we have to deal with it. And it just made me love you so much more because I was like, we can we're we're willing to pivot and we're willing to redirect for the better. Yeah. And for everyone listening, it wasn't a 24 hour thing. No, this was, this happened. Like something came up each day. We were home really until like yesterday. I totally. Think. So like we dealt with it every day and talked through it every single day. We were home 10 days. Yeah. yeah this didn't happen like, like a few days ago. I think people might think happened over Thanksgiving, but it happened before Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Good yeah. call. It was nine days of like something mm-hmm. and then yeah. really having to talk it out and like, talking to our therapists and trying to figure it out, but it was so, it was so good of you to receive what I was saying. You, what was your question you asked on FaceTime? Oh, about like the, cause I feel I was, it was about like bitching versus hard love and mm-hmm. how, cause I, f- I feel like men sometimes don't respond well if like their wife or girlfriend is like nagging them or bitching at them. Oh, right, right, right. But it's like you were. <laughs> I just remember. Correct. Right. <laughs> Alex was Alex was trying to give you hard love to like shake you up a little bit to make you realize like this is big. But I was saying, how can you show that this is hard love versus the bitching or the nagging? I think it's a fine line. I think it's really hard to do, and that's why you have to communicate so much. Like what could be the nagging or the bitching is when we really are our true selves, or like when how you value success and growth, like. For me, we just have different mentalities about that. Like I could do my job forever and be very happy. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's not necessarily growth. But she has to be okay with that because it is my true self. So like if she was harping on me, that would be a lot of nagging and bitching. Little day-to-day comments too. Like little little chirps. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do those. Passive aggressive. Those those you can't do. I agree with that. But but to sit down and say this is going to be tough, but this is tough love because it makes better love. Mm -hmm. It's going to be... And then I think a guy has to really, I think it's tougher for a guy to be like, this is coming out of her mouth and this is creating a problem and it's an attack on me because I'm the spouse. Mm -hmm. It's something I'm doing wrong. And instead of coming back at me with my long laundry list of things that I need to improve on, you have to say like, you have to receive and be like, okay, like, fuck that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts when somebody tells you, Hey, this is what you're doing wrong. And it's like, I don't and know. And I think most guys would realize that the the girl or the woman in this scenario is correct. It just takes them a while to like fully accept it and to calm down. Because for me, it's like a personal attack. He like fight. I can be very upset and be like, oh, F, fuck no. Like that's mm-hmm. not true. But then it's like you sit with it for a little bit. You really digest it. And it's like, no, she's right. I'm just scared to talk about it now. So it takes, I feel like for guys, just longer to process. Yeah. Yeah. You did have to go to like a really vulnerable place to yeah. answer. Like, I mean, he paused at one point and he's like, I remember you did this with your hand. And you're like, I, I can't answer these questions. And I'm like, you have to answer the questions mm-hmm. and you have to answer them honestly, or we can't move forward. We could move forward, but we're right back here next month. That's so true. 
Like you really had to push each other to be extremely vulnerable, to have those tough conversations. Also, you're so right. In three months, you'd be spiraling all over again. This exact fight would happen, but worse. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Way worse. And then, Blow and up. it's like that. I think that, I think that's what I'm learning. Like marriage, job, life is just like constant. Every like three months, I think I'm like, how's everything going? Like mm -hmm. if I just check in like that, it's so much better than just like waiting until a problem comes up. Yeah. You know? Or more frequently even checking in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And just saying like, what's going on? How are we? What's, because what's happening? Like, even, I always think to myself, like when things are really, really good between us, and I can tell we both feel that way. I always say to myself like, oh shit, when's the next time we're going through something? Do you really? Yeah. I, I get, when things are good, I get so scared for the bad. Yes. Oh. I don't get scared for it. I just wonder like, and I always hope that we can remember that feeling of like when things are really, really good. Wait, you know, that's what you fight for is that feeling. That's yeah. why you make good, good. But I'm like, it, it's happening. It's got to come up soon. I don't know if you've exactly explained it. But like, what is the solution? Like, how are you guys going to fix it? And how will, like, how will you go forward without it happening again? Well, we haven't really talked about that. So huh. you, it's been very flirty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, little things like that, like that's big. Yeah, yeah but, but can I ask you something? Yeah. <laughs> well, should we answer that question first? Yeah, answer it. Well, no. Or, I'm trying. I, we haven't really talked about like how I'm trying. Like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to unpack my own bag. <laughs> and that didn't even happen. No. And like, she went out super late each night we were home, so that didn't happen either. <laughs> and here I am at this in the podcast room, just <laughs> chipper as a bird. Happy to be here. Um, I feel for Graham so much. <laughs> I told her mother though. I told Content Camp. Oh no. Yeah. We're leaving we, these like she's been going out every night. And you want a grandbaby. I want a baby. We're not getting any younger. You did not bring up the B word and then to Kim. Yeah. He shut the door. And I was like, I'm yeah. literally she was going like, to you get getting tired of her grandma. I said, absolutely. He's like, I'm done. I didn't do anything Saturday night. She went to a thing. But anyway, sorry, back <laughs> on track. What was the question? What's the solution? <laughs> What's your solution well, so, for me? Well, hold on. You we have gone through some of it because you kind of gave me some things I needed to do and to work on. And while I was home, I had, I did some of those things. Yes. <clears throat> that I'm not going to talk about on the podcast, but like I did that. You can tell me later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So I think it's, and I think it's just like keeping each other accountable and doing those things. Yes. Like I know you want me to do this on my own, but um, like just check-ins, I think. Like there's not like a really fix it to this. Like it's not a one day thing. It's going to take, this is like a, a forever thing in a way. Um, well, Graham, we love you. Did we get all the questions yep. asked that you wanted to ask? Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway that I took from this was that it's not going to fix overnight and it's not going to like, you guys are going to continue to work on it. Like mm -hmm. it's not just like, Oh, we're happy. Everything's fixed. We're, we're perfect again. Like you guys obviously have a lot to work to keep doing. It made me really comfortable with conflict. I was already comfortable with it, but every time well, we get through something like this, you're more comfortable now. And now, now, I'm even, now I'm even better at it. No, I'm like, I'm not scared of it because it's not, it doesn't result in yelling anger or like, it's like, it's okay. The mm -hmm. other side of it's good. Mm -hmm. It's just tough to get through it. Yeah. And hard conversations make a stronger marriage. That's right. Yeah. That's a good line. That's a great line. Okay. Well, All right. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you, Graham Bennett. So Graham, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It was nice doing it with you for once. Yay. Yeah. We love podcast. Graham. Yeah, we love we, you. I love you guys. Jordan told me yeah. the other day she likes you Thank you, you for more being vulnerable. I do like you more than Alex. <laughs> That's fair. I get that. I was like telling her about like the stuff going on. Uh -huh. She was like, just to be clear, <laughs> I like yeah. him more than you. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay. I'm going to go eat some it's right now. Oh, hey, I have something to say. When, when couples are going through... When couples are going through arguments, it's really cool when the girls don't just go, don't just go to bat for me. Like, you're not like, yeah. You're like, no, let's take, let me look at this logically. Like, he's yeah. got a lot of points. No, I'm on Graham's side because I feel a lot of his pain. <laughs> I'm just, well, you don't even tell me the rest of the story. I'm just, I'm on his side. Graham's side. Let's go. <laughs> okay. See you guys. Bye, Bye Graham. Bye. Oh, Thanks, Graham. All right, Alex. Now that Graham has left the building, I have a question for you. Wait, Jordan, before you ask that question, we have to do an ad really quick. All right. This is the greatest ad of all time. Because it is. Oh, God. NASCAR. What are we doing this week? 
We're going to Nashville for the NASCAR awards. And, and what? Yes! yes! It's guys, it's, it is. It is. When we got this email, and I tell you, when we got this email, I'll never forget where I was on Western Avenue driving the car. And Jordan's like, we're going to the awards for NASCAR. And you almost started crying. I'm so excited. I'm wearing a NASCAR shirt today. Um, what are we doing, though, on... Okay, so the, the awards are Thursday, mm-hmm. but what are we doing on Wednesday? We are going to be interviewing the drivers. Yes. Which is going to be so exciting. We get to ask them questions. There's like going to be like a panel. And then we get to go to a Chase Rice concert. That's right. So, like Jordan just said, the NASCAR Awards will be a live show taking place on the main level of Al Dean's from 7 to 8 on November 30th. The event is open to the general public, so all of you that are in Nashville can come. Large and Spider, who work here at Barstool, will also be talking with all the playoff drivers about the drama and the excitement of the 2022 season. We are so excited. We love Nashville. We are dressing up. We're going to do black tie. So come to Al Dean's. And be there from 7 to 8. You can meet the drivers. You can meet us. You can meet Spider, Large, Jeff D. Lowe, the whole gang. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, it's going to be a blast. We, I, when I say we're excited, we are so excited. So, when you and Graham were dealing with this, mm-hmm. what, what was the sex life like? Was it existent? Like, was it existing? Well, we had, so, we had, he, he had a good point that I didn't even think about. I have been gone a lot. We've yeah. been traveling. He's been working till like sometimes I'm asleep when he gets home. We haven't even been in New York city. Yeah. And he's in like, we do have a lot going on. Yeah. So in a sense, I'm just proud of us for like recognizing this, but we would have sex like maybe like once or twice a week. And it was just, and we were like tired. Like it was, but it was fine. You know, like you're not, we weren't pissed off at each other. Mm -hmm. It was just like, Hey, what's up? You know, like that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you can still have sex. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, how's it been now that you guys are talking through things? Oh, my gosh. I don't even call it makeup sex because it's not what it is. <laughs> I like going to ask you, do you think it's like kind of makeup sex vibes? It's, it is that vibe, <laughs> kind of. Oh, it's like makeup sex is great. <laughs> I, you guys want to know what I did before today. I didn't, or before I got here today because we had like an extra hour at home. What? I actually achieved the double orgasm. I've never what? done it. I've never done it. Oh, because you know what we're doing? Girl! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. So jealous. So <laughs> proud. <laughs> so jealous. So jealous. <laughs> it, I didn't know if like, I don't know, like you've talked about it and I've never been able to do it. What was the push? Like, what were the two types? How did he make you orgasm? So I, I was like, I, uh, sorry. The regime? Everybody. Yes. Well, and the boobs? We're bringing back fingering, which I, which I know I said we don't Fuck do yeah. play. No, you're bringing back foreplay. Yes. <clears throat> bringing, never, like, I was really missing out on foreplay. Like, Hell I yeah. don't, you guys didn't really tell me that. You just kind of let me say I don't do foreplay. Well, we don't judge here, but it was a little shocking. Yeah. yeah I'll be honest. <laughs> well, we're actually not judgmental, <laughs> so that's why. Getting fingered is God's gift to earth. <laughs> I've forgotten, like, I don't think that would happen, like, a, sometimes. But it's like, okay, I'll be, like, getting ready. And it'll just, like, and I'm like, oh, oh, I will not do my hair. And it's just, like... <laughs> It's been it's been so much fun, so spicy. Wait, I want to get figured right now. <laughs> Bye, boy. Alex, Alex, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. I'm just kidding. Yeah, like it's just been. Wow. He's really. I'm like you have it in you. Actually, yeah. I have it in me. <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you you orgasm by being fingered and by his. Yeah, sorry, Alana. I thought of you during sex, but because yeah. he, he did, he, the fingering, and I was like, "Wait, I can fully orgasm right here." Wait, so you orgasm just by getting fingered? Yes. All right, this that's on my to do list, girls. I think I or, I must orgasm easily on the inside. Yes. Okay, in, me too. Internal. Correct. And that it's a different kind. Mm-hmm. And then we, and then I was like, "Wait, what is this?" I was like, and then I was like, "Well, of course we can still have sex next." And I was like, wow. Like, the thing about it is it made sex so much longer. Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Oh, love. yeah. Not as fun for him, I don't think, that part. I, but actually, I think he was loving it. I feel like guys love seeing the girl that they love come. Yeah. Yes. For orgasm. Right. Ew, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, come is a weird <laughs> <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> come is so masculine. It you know is. what I mean? Orgasm those is words so, I don't like. I don't like feminine. <laughs> orgasm is feminine. Come is masculine. But it's we both do it. Wait. When we orgasm, that's technically the coming? Yeah. But yeah. no cum comes out. No, but like 
it, technically it's the same thing now. Like really? an orgasm and coming are the same thing. Yeah, because a guy has an orgasm when he comes. I always thought Energy. coming was the white stuff that came out. No, no, coming. <laughs> <laughs> but you you can use that word. It is interchangeable to use as an orgasm slang term. And it works? It yeah. It doesn't have to mean white stuff coming out of you? No, I could be like, I just came. Yeah, true, I guess. Like I've said that. I say that to guys all the time. Like I just came. I don't tell a guy I just orgasm. I'm like, I just came. Oh, I say orgasm. Because I didn't know that I didn't know there was other options. Wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm not telling a guy that I barely know that I just, well, guys don't make me. <laughs> so, You'd be telling happen. a lie. Well, yeah, I'll be telling a lie. It's been a long time since the guys made me come. Oh. <laughs> we'll work on Silly. that, though. Yeah, we will. Yes, we will. Okay, um, so what else have you been doing, though? Spill the tea, sis. Um, the, a, lot of, a lot of the, we've, we've really mastered, he... Doesn't listen to the podcast, but does know fully what he, but about the boobs. And so just like a finger, that whole con, and it's just, but it's just like, um, so passionate Aww. and like really just like sweet. It's just like the best. Like it's the, it's probably the best sex I've ever had. Wait, can I ask you a question? Actually it is. Yeah. This is so simple, but when you're having sex and this goes for you too, Alana, do you ever have it like where let's you're on bottom and he's on top, I guess vice versa where it would work too. But when you're having sex and like they grab your hands and like they hold them Today, I <laughs> melt in my pants. Like they put it up here. Yes, but they like, gr- like they grab your hand and like they push your hand up because you just feel so like close and loved. Yes, because you know what I find a lot. I'm like, I, I need to get closer to you. Yes, I, I can't. Like, Oof, I, I feel like that. everybody. If you're having sex, I'm like, how? I need to like eat you. Like that's the only thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, how do we get closer? When a long time ago, one of the a guy that I have had really good sex with, which is funny because we did not have a great emotional connection. He was interested in end well. He would always do that. And I was like, this is the best sex ever because I feel so, I love passionate sex. Mm-hmm. I don't like, I like rough sex is great, but uh, pa- passionate sex, oh my God, when it's passionate, I die. Rough is, I, you know, I, I'm with you on that. I'm moving a bit away from rough. <laughs> Same. Mm-hmm. More towards, because, but pa- rough is something you can do on like a one night stand probably. It's like fucking. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But then, Oh yeah! Is no that... passion. I want passion. But I also want passion. But in intimacy, yes. Does fucking fall into passion though? Yes, you can have okay, passion. I was like, hold fucking. on. I think that that could be because there's you can fuck passionately. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the bet. That's my. That's the one I choose. Same. But not all the time. Oh, I just depends. You ever just like daydream about all the things that you want Graham to do to you? Yes. I think about sex way oh, too much. I, I don't think so. about it that often. Do you oh, think about it a lot? I think so. All the time. Before I go to bed when I wake up during the yeah, day. Yeah, I think I do. It's like always really? in my head. Yeah. But I also don't have someone consistently to have sex with. Yeah, I think I, I do think about it a little. I've been thinking, yeah. So like if, if, I, if, I, if I was married, I don't think, I mean, since you have it at your disposal whenever you want, it's mm-hmm. a little different. Like, I'm always craving it, so I'm always thinking about it. When we, I was thinking about this today when we were doing that. I was like, this is so much fun. Because we do get to do this forever. Like, this is pretty, I'm pretty excited about this little scenario here. Good for you. Thank you. I was like, oh, wow. But he's got to stop. T- like, I was like, there. I am doing things at some points. Like, I'm, I'm busy. So stop doing that. But then I'm like, don't. Don't stop doing it. So fun. It's like, he's like a, just blossoms. Wait, we're bringing foreplay back into oh, the minutes. I tell you what. I don't know how you guys didn't say try foreplay. You told me thing. to try a vibrator, but nobody said foreplay. Well, we don't want to shame you. Uh, yeah. I was a little shocked, though. I will admit. Force I just couldn't oh. figure it out. I was, like, confused. We would just, like, make it. We just, like, like, like yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. a little. But we wouldn't do, like, I didn't understand what you were saying until I did it. But you can fully orgasm in the foreplay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get two. Then you get two. A twofer. <laughs> and in what world do we not want two? Do you prefer one over the other, like, the feeling? Uh, well, right now I'm really into the fingering feeling. But that's because it's just like, I think it's the new toy. It's like new. Let yeah. me tell you, for, oh, foreplay is the best part of sex. I'm going to say it. I I mean, <laughs> no, you are like, after, if you have a, a lot of foreplay and then like once like the you know what goes in the you know what, that's an incredible feeling. But I just love foreplay. I know. I, I'm with you. I really, I do. I agree. It's so nice. It's 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 a lot of fun. I'm so happy for you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you guys for listening. Of course. of course. That means a lot. I know we were just going to talk to him about gifts, but then I was like, we should just... Tell them. We love having Graham on. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, he is really. He's the best. He is the best. And I feel like he really opened up. 
I felt like I was shocked. He was so like fine. I do feel like he just thought he was talking to us though. Yeah. yeah. Like I just think he was like, yeah, I'm just like telling you guys the story. We have that effect on people. Yeah. It it's happens. Great. It's crazy. <laughs> We're gonna talk about birth control. Oh, that's an option. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And if you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom break, or you're just not sure, we're excited to talk to you about a new company that's giving emergency contraception a much-needed rebrand. And the Mean Girls want you to know to do your research when you take something like this. This is a form of plan B, right? So you never know how it's going to affect your body, so you have to research it and be very careful. Julie is an FDA-approved morning-after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. It's aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame, which the Mean Girls feel very passionate about. It works best when taken right away or within 72 hours of unprotected sex. You can find Julie at Walmarts across the U.S., or you can order it online to have in the future just in case. It's legal in all 50 states. You do not need an ID, prescription, or a credit card to get it. You can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest Walmart today. That's juliecare, J-U-L-I-E-C-A-R-E dot C-O to learn more or find it at your nearest Walmart today. Love. All right, Alex. Um, question for you. Yes. So the other day you texted us something about being a priority. And I want to talk about that because that like hit home. So hard for me. Well, do you, what's the exact text? Do you wanna, I screenshot it and then I deleted it. I don't know why I deleted it. But I can find it because let me tell you. Making people a priority while others make you an option. Oh. Ho, ho, wow. ho. Just to blow your mind. If, if you had to pick something that triggered me more in this <laughs> life, it th- that that is what triggers me the most you in this life. You just read that and think, wow. Mm. That, that like breaks my heart, that type of comment. Yeah, I mean, I I love this type of conversation because I've been in a relationship where I wasn't the priority and it like it destroys you as a human being when the person that you care for doesn't make you a priority when I mean, it's obviously okay for your partner to choose this or that over you every once in a while, but when you're in a relationship with someone and they continuously pick everything over you and never make you a priority, it like breaks your heart as a human being because you never feel like you're good enough because you're never their first choice. Yeah, I think I think that's so valid and I'm sitting over here thinking about it and I don't know that people recognize it a lot of times. If, if somebody says to you, I'm your option, but you're my priority. It's it's like, so you're telling me, I didn't even think about it that way. And a lot of times that's probably why they're treating you a certain way. And it's right in front of your face. But then the, but then I asked the question too. I'm like, then who, who adjusts? And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. Does the priority say, okay, I got to step back a little bit and I just have to make you an option because I'm your option. Or does the option say, I'm gonna drop everything else and you're going to become my priority. And I think it just boils down to how, like the relationship, but some, something has to give cause you're on different levels. I mean, I personally think you're with the wrong human being. If you don't think of them as a priority, like I don't want to be dating anybody who I just think of as an option or who thinks of me as an option. I'm sorry. I had gone to a friend thing there or same with friends though too. Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be so extreme. Like they shouldn't always be your priority, but there's just some things in life where you're like, wow, I'm really just an option to them. Like, for example, if we use it for the friends, like let's say like I ask you to hang out and you're like, yeah, let's do it. But then Alana comes two days later and is like, Alex, let's go to this concert. And you're like, see you, Jordan. I have a better, I have like a mm-hmm. better thing. Mm-hmm. Like that would make me feel like shit because I'm like, I'm just an option in your life. Like you don't respect me. There, That is so real. There are people that I think set out socially for the most <laughs> rewarding option. Mm-hmm. I will say this though. I don't mind being people's option. In a sense of this, I do mind it where if something better comes along, they're okay to drop me because I think that's just like rude. Yeah. But I think if, if I'm, because priority is such a sacred slot, I feel like there's only a certain amount of people I can hold to the priority standard if we're talking friends, but option, I'm like, I'm okay being some people's option. Like I, I think of it as like second tier friend, third yeah, tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that area I'm okay with. Yeah. I think it's different too when you're single because like, I feel like single people hold their friends a little bit more closely because we don't have 
a partner. Mm-hmm. But when I when I think of priority and options, I immediately think of romantic relationships because you're out with friends. I don't want to be like, kind of sucks to be like, yeah, I'm just my friend's options. But like also friends are friends. They aren't supposed to be like your everything. But right. but I don't know it's hard for me to like even think about friends because I just me- like automatically I'm like romantic just because it triggers me. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think I think romantically, yeah, you have it, it doesn't work if you're not both priority. I do I have been an option. Same. And then I became the priority because Graham? Yeah, I mean, I guess I was technically an option at one point. And and I had to say that to him. And it I think they either get it or they don't. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. You got to tell them though. You got to be like, I'm not going to be your fucking option for one more hour unless I become your priority very quickly. One thousand percent. Because you're mine, right? Because you, you said people treat you how you let them. So if you're being treated as an option and you're allowing that, then you're just going to be the option. Yeah. But if you demand priority and they reject it, then. Exactly. And I think priority sometimes scares people because they're like, well, that's so serious. Oh my gosh. And it's like. Hey, you can hang out with your friends. You can do yes. what you want. That's not what girls mean by that. It just means like, I don't know. I guess to me, it's like if you make plans with me and then like a golf turn, like your friends like want to go golfing. You're like, see, I'm going to go golfing with the boys. It's like, like you, you made a commitment to me, like stick with it. Right. And, and if, if we're and in the light of not keeping score, if the golf tournament comes up, and he's like, oh, there's a golf tournament. I'm not going to go. And you're like, oh, we have hung out every night. I want to do something else. You're still technically the priority. Exactly. Because he put your feelings first and you said, okay. But if he's like, I'm just, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I guess it's asking, like, communicating about if it's okay. Yeah, like the delivery of being a priority. Yeah. Because if you think about the two options on the table, option, priority, like, it's you want to be, you want to prioritize people, but there's a way to do it to where it's, like, yeah. best of both worlds. Oh, I love that, actually, like, putting their feelings first. Yeah, like, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. But that's so true. Like, if you're with someone who's always making you an option, or you always feel like an option, you really should reevaluate the relationship you're in. Because, let me tell you, I did that for a very long time, and it, it will destroy you as a human being. Being the option? Being the option, yeah. What were the other options? <laughs> the boys. The bros. It was everything. Okay, so it's not other people in this scenario. It was uh, other things. And this was years ago, by the way. This isn't yeah. something that's happening like in my life now. Um, yeah, it was, it was just like a toxic relationship, and it was just everything was always coming first. Yeah. I was always getting chose second or third or fourth or fifth. So it wasn't like... Because this is the other thing I wonder, is it, in that scenario, is it Jordan is the option or is it being in a relationship is the option on the hierarchy of things that are important? You know, like, so job can be an option. Yeah. And then relationship can be an option and the friends socializing, like those would all be options. Or is it like, does it feel personal? Like I'm the option. For me, it was definitely personal. Okay. Like Jordan was just always like, she'll just be around. Mm -hmm. But I, I, but I like to, I also allowed it. Totally. Like, absolutely. I didn't, so I stuck around. Yeah, yeah. You, I dealt with it. Right. I, I let him treat me the like the way I was letting him treat me. Was he your priority? Oh, fully. Okay. Yeah, so it was, it was very different. Mm-hmm. But that's why it triggers me so much because it's like I know how that feels and it's like it's not going to get better unless you say something about it. And then how they receive it. Yeah, and if they don't receive it well, you got to get out of there. Got to say, see ya. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, man, that's true. That's a good little... It's a great, it's a great, I had never heard it. That's mm-hmm. why it caught my attention. And then, and then I was like, oh yeah, hundred percent that this applies to life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's amazing what happens when you like stick up for yourself. Yeah. Facts. Facts. <laughs> no Facts. printer. <laughs> Zero printer. Facts. No printer. Do you want to do the listener question next? I do. Before we do that, let's talk about who's presenting it. Woohoo! The one, the only, Vagisil. Vagisil is a woman-owned and woman-led company with 50 years of expertise. Vagisil continues to be an innovator, creating top-rated products for women's personal care, all of which we are obsessed with. Mm-hmm. Around the world, women say they love Vagisil because their products work beautifully and they look beautifully and they smell beautifully. Go to www.vagisil.com slash mean girl and sign up to save $2 on any Vagisil product. Love. Okay, this week's listener question is a doozy. Oh, God. I'm scared. (laughs) Anonymous, pretty please. 
Of always. 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 Yes. <laughs> always. I've known my husband for over 20 years and we've been married for five. We were friends forever and I even knew and lived with him during his glory days. I feel like we had a pretty solid relationship and because we were friends for so long, his personality and lifestyle years ago didn't, doesn't bother me. Recently, I was trying to find a pic on his phone and went to, and to my surprise, discovered naked pictures from someone. Now, he's a guy and they're all pervs, but this wasn't from a porn site or a, or a slutty part of TikTok. These were picture messages. I have this co this constant urge to go through his phone. We talked about it and of course he insisted nothing was going on. How do I stop feeling the need to be a detective and move on? Well, you need to be a detective because you found something. Also, why is this man just keeping nudes in his phone if he knows you're going to go through it? Did she say they're, that they're not, it's not porn? What was that part? It's not a porn she star? She was making it clear, even more clear, that <laughs> someone sent them to him. Oh, no. like, like, they are personalized what, pictures. What sane man is just keeping nudes on his camera roll? I'm not on his side, though. I'm just saying in general. Like, Can we start there? Like, Why <laughs> does this man just have nudes on his camera roll? Well, I a married man. Yeah, well, I think I think um if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to hide. But I don't think this is a cry for a Oh, it's more of a slap in the face. I don't think he thinks she's going to do anything and I don't think she is doing anything. Oh, really? I think she's an option and I think that it's become <clears throat> very clear and I don't think this guy cares. That's what I mean, like I don't that's why if he no sane man would keep nudes on their phone if they didn't care. Like he does not care. I mean, he's at, he's texting and asking, and then to insist that nothing's going on is like odd. That's odd. I am so confused about this. Same. The delivery is so nonchalant. Like, to me, like, that is cheating. It sounds like she, he gaslighted her into believing that nothing's going on because she didn't even like provide a reason why nothing's going on. Like, excuse me, why are there nudes on your phone? Yes. Hello. Well. Right. Also, like, also, if a if a guy's got nudes on his phone, delete them or like don't like I don't know. That's make what more I'm of saying. an effort to hide. Put they, them in your hidden. They, he he knows he can have the nudes on his phone, and I don't think she's doing anything. What is the, who's the source? Right. Where is the source? Also, why isn't she flipping shit? Why is she not flipping? She goes. <laughs> How do I stop feeling the need to be a detective and move on? Be, be a detective. No, detect. You detect need you and need, arrest. <laughs> you need to confront this man because he is cheating on you. That is a form of cheating in my book. Be a police officer. Be a fucking sheriff. Yeah, like arrest and put in jail. <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, uh, no, it makes me mad. It's like, don't let this man treat you like this. There's a little missing component I agree. Here. That's why I think he's like literally manipulated her into believing that there's nothing wrong. Nudes on the phone, fine. Uh, okay, fine. No. I, I can survive it. I could survive that. I okay. could survive that war. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's a war, but you can survive it. Yes. You can. You can. I can survive that war. I'd flip shit, but I would. Yep. I'm gonna get through it though. Him being like, let's talk about it. There's nothing going on. Like that's crazy. I just have nudes on my cam. My cam. I don't even have risky pictures on of myself in my camera roll. I hide those pictures. Well, I think that it would be more normal if he had like dick pics on his phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like a like, camera roll is so vulnerable to just have. Bad pictures on there. This is this is tough because there's something missing. Yeah, or not? He's bored out of his mind. <clears throat> maybe. Yeah, maybe he wants her to fight. I think he's bored. Where yeah. do you think he found them? Where do you think he got? I, I think them? a girl sent them to him. I think he's yeah, like. Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> we're glazing over that part about like his non his like him not hiding it well. Like, are the texts in the phone? He, he is receiving nudes from another woman. Yeah, are, why are you asking who this story. woman is? Like, end of story, right? <laughs> yes. The, the message could be more simple. Yeah, like, I found nudes on my husband's phone. What do I do? Like, I, And what's the part about not reprimanding him for the earlier part of his life? Does this have something to do with that? Uh, <laughs> is he a professional athlete? I'm not sure. I feel like she's saying that he's a little wild child but doesn't bother her. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you professional athlete vibes. <laughs> I feel really bad. I... 
that we're kind of like laughing. No, but sorry, we don't mean to laugh. We're just like I'm shocked just like so confused. Like I think this is a good example of a man just being like a piece of shit. <clears throat> yes, that I is so jarring and shocking that it's like, what else is there to do but be shocked? And you laugh. know, what my mom asked my dad <laughs> over Thanksgiving. She was like, because. We were, they were like, Jordan, why are you single? Like, <laughs> meet somebody already. <laughs> and I was like, <clears throat> I'm trying, but it's hard out there. Like, a lot of people cheat. And, she's, and she was like, to my dad, she's like, why do guys suck? Why do all men cheat? And I was like, I don't know. But I feel like it's a very common. These yeah. Days. Yeah. Like, more common than it used to be. Yes. Like, since COVID, I feel like the cheating pandemic has just risen. Really? Like, so easy. Maybe yeah. it's because I'm getting older. Yes, I think that more serious things to break. But I feel like so many people I know are cheating or being cheated on. I uh, not you guys, don't worry. These are other people. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's not I, funny. No, it is funny. I um I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I, I bet just for some reason in my mind, but I bet professional athletes have so many nude photos on their phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like th- a thousand, there's a comma, a I'm, thousand. I'm never <laughs> dating an athlete. You couldn't pay me enough money to date an athlete. Well, you couldn't pay me enough money to send an athlete a nude photo because I know I would be falling among the masses yeah, and that yeah. would be difficult for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. She needs to talk to him. Yeah. Talk to the man and be like, well, or how about this? Just know you're not crazy. You're not, you're not yeah, crazy. You're to this so woman, not crazy. Right. You're, you're, you know, in your gut that it's something's going on and you are correct and yeah. get a little bit. Life is short. And I know you've been with him for 20 years and that doesn't have to end, but maybe relight your own flame. Yeah. And also like figure out where he got the nudes from, who this woman is, if there's anything going on between them and like have that conversation. Yeah. Don't be an option. Be his, become his priority. Yeah. He's clearly yours. Cause you're married and you need to be each other's priority in a marriage. And it would be nice to get to a spot where you don't have to look through their phone because you're so confident and knowing that it's safe and secure. A hundred percent. She's not alone. And a lot of people feel this way. And it's really sweet that she reached out. And mm-hmm. also, I'm sorry, that had to be a gut wrenching feeling to see that. Yeah. Also like, I feel like a lot of people, men and women, get manipulated in relationships and, like, I feel for her. Mm -hmm. And I just hope she has the courage to talk about it with maybe people in her life that love her and maybe him because what she's going through is shitty and she deserves better. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. That listener question was presented by Vagisil. All Vagisil washes are formulated at a healthy pH for the vulva. But Vagisil pH balance wash goes a step further. It's the only wash with the boost of lacto prebiotic. Wow, that's actually incredible. That helps support the good bacteria present in the vulva's microbiome. That is huge because I know we all want more prebiotics. The import- this is important because the microbiome is your vulva's natural defense against odor. Plus, it's a- it has soothing botanicals aloe, and chamomile. This is like the best. It's hypoallergenic, clinically proven, and gynecologist tested. For all day freshness, give your vulva the good stuff. Vagisil pH balance wash with lactoprebiotic. That's, in, that's, act, sorry, that's really cool. That's actually incredible. Um, go to Vagisil.com slash Mean Girl and sign up to save $2 on any Vagisil product. That's Vagisil.com slash Mean Girl to save $2 on any product. Woohoo. Well, <laughs> woohoo, <laughs> woohoo. Um, well, AB, do you want to do what you do best and wrap us up? <clears throat> Follow us. Buy our merch. Yes. Buy our merchandise. It's the last day to get 20% off on our merch. And you saw Graham wearing it. You see you wearing it. I'm wearing it. Alana's not wearing it. But we'll let that slide. It's so dirty. I couldn't. I know. This is disgusting. <laughs> I wore it so I wore it all weekend. It's the comfiest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a five-star review. And I know it's too late to say this, but make sure you're watching on YouTube. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. Because we're more fun on YouTube. You can tell the crazy things we do. We are more fun on YouTube. Yeah. But love you guys. Have a great day. Love you guys.